Qualified immunity is a defense that allows government officials to escape civil lawsuits involving violations of individuals' constitutional rights. Qualified immunity stops individuals who've had their homes, vehicles, or in many cases, their bodies damaged by government employees from being reimbursed for the damage done. How can individuals overcome qualified immunity and get their day in court? They must show that the violated right is clearly established. That means finding a previous case where a court ruled that officials violated someone else's rights in almost the exact same way. For example, a police officer who sicked his dog on a surrendering suspect was given qualified immunity because the suspect was sitting down with his hands up rather than lying down. But qualified immunity doesn't just shield officers, it shields all government workers, including elected politicians, inspectors, and IRS agents, allowing them to have a case against them dismissed before it is considered by a jury. For instance, last year a court granted qualified immunity to members of a medical board who unconstitutionally searched a doctor's confidential client files without a warrant. Proponents of ending qualified immunity say it protects officials' bad behavior. On the other side, qualified immunity defenders say that it prevents officers and other government agents from being bankrupted over a reasonable split-second decision. But would ending qualified immunity open the floodgates for spurious lawsuits? The answer is an unequivocal no. Abolishing qualified immunity would not end the ability for officers and officials to argue that they behaved reasonably when making a split-second decision. That protection is built into the Fourth Amendment of the U.S. Constitution. There are several procedural rules specifically designed against meritless lawsuits. If you can't show that the officer's use of force was unreasonable, your suit will be thrown out without the officer invoking qualified immunity. Moreover, officials almost never personally pay when they are on the losing side of a civil rights lawsuit. One study showed that the government paid 99.8% of the time. When people who swore to uphold the Constitution break their oath and abuse their power, courts are supposed to protect individuals. But qualified immunity and other doctrines prevent officials from being held accountable that's why the Institute for Justice created the Project on Immunity and Accountability. If we must follow the law, then the government must follow the Constitution.